It's not going well for Kamala Harris. They sent her to Africa <laughs> to make to make friends. This shit. <laughs> And she can't make friends at home. I don't know what. Oh, she's half as charming there as she is here. Do what? Uh, it says leaders in Ghana, Zambia, slammed the United States for undemocratic meddling amid Vice President Harris's tour of Africa. Well, it sure sounds bad if you say it like that. <laughs> Wait, <laughs> undemocratic meddling? Oh no, that's for uh, the other one. Come on, undemocratic. That's for his. Uh, I got it. Yeah. So watch this. So this is the guy, he's um, the Zambian op uh, opposition leader. His name is Fred Menembe. This is his speech during the visit from Kamala Harris. This is the speech during the her visit. Okay, ready? A country that has toppled so many governments in Africa, that has led so many coups in Africa and other parts of the world, a country that has killed so many of our leaders in Africa and other parts of the world. The killers of Patrice Rumumba, those who top toppled Kwame Nkrumah, those who killed Nasa, those who killed Muammar Gaddafi, today are coming to teach us about democracy. A country that has been built on a brutal force, on enslavement of other human beings, on the humiliation of Africans, the exploitation of Africans, the plunder of Africa, today is coming to teach us about democracy. <laughs> if you have no respect for the dignity of others, if you have no respect for the sovereignty of other countries, you cannot claim to be a champion of democracy. Bam. That's the African stream. Bam. Oh, I should have heard should her giggling as he sang it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so he's laying it out. Uh, America, you are the... Uh, the imperialists, you killed all our African leaders, you, you pillage our natural resources, you come in and you're going to lecture us about democracy? Sir, Kamala Harris doesn't know anything about that stuff. <laughs> uh, and this is from, again, their official Twitter, African Stream, says, uh, no China obsession here. So now watch, here is, um, this is from Ghana. So he's going to watch what he says about uh China and the United States. No, no, there may be an obsession in America about the Chinese activities on the continent, but there's no such obsession here. But China is one of the many countries with whom Ghana is engaged in the world. Your country is one of them. Virtually all the countries of the world are friends of Ghana. <laughs> That's right. Everybody in the world is friends of Ghana. And he's, I guess he's just calling America just like another hoe. Yeah, right? we just, I see a lot of countries. That's hurtful. <laughs> well, Ghana's the one they always said was the least corrupt, and that's like the even like the neoliberal rags. Mm -hmm. So it's hard to like trash Ghana if that's what they're saying. They're the ones that the same neoliberal said was like the good one. So this is not uh, Africa is done. It seems like with the United States, especially now it could, it's turned to Russia. And it's turned to China for, for to make peace, to make investments in their continent. Uh, the United States just comes in, like they said, and they kill their leaders, and and uh, and meddle in their politics. Um, remember this: South African politician says he'll pick Putin up from the airport to avoid arrest. So they're not. Africa is turning. I'm the United States. Russia writes off $20 billion in debt to African countries. I thought we were kicking their ass in this Ukraine war <laughs> and we were crushing their economy and their economy is so crushed they can write off $20 billion in debt to Africa? <laughs> really? <laughs> My God. Putin is he's rebuilding communism. <laughs> you just forgive debt. Writing off debt? Yeah. That's communism. It's called moral hazard. Putin. Uh, can Harris visit shore up relations with Africa? That's the question in Foreign Policy magazine. Can 
Kamala Harris visit shore up relations with Africa? <laughs> Surely they knew the answer to the question before they finished typing the question. <laughs> well, the only way it could work is if Ka Kamala Harris can giggle their relationship. <laughs> <laughs> the vice president's trip is the latest effort to counter Moscow's and Beijing influence on the continent with a giggle with the left. She's oh, she's laughing right there. Yeah. It's a good looking suit, though. I got to say, I kind of I like that suit. <laughs> I like the color. U.S. Vice President Kamala Harris began her three nation Africa tour on Saturday, landing in Accra, Ghana, as part of a visit that includes stops to Tanzania and Zambia. She is the 18th and most senior U.S. official to visit Africa this year as the United States looks to loosen Russia's and China's alliance uh -huh. with African nations. Wow. We already tried throwing Anthony Blinken at this problem, <laughs> and somehow that didn't work. You remember they sent Anthony Blinken over there? We got to bring out the big guns. Mm -hmm. And they said the same shit right to his face, by the way. Despite the heavy charm offensive... <laughs> <laughs> Boy, if there's one name I think of when I hear heavy charm offensive, <laughs> it's Kamala Harris. Well, Blinken and then Harris, don't spoil them. She, she's over there trying. She's facing a barrier in undoing years of what many Africans perceived as previous U.S. administrations undervaluing of the strategic relationship that Africa states can offer. But the message now from Washington's diplomats is that the United States foreign policy is committed to moving away from what has traditionally been a relationship more focused on national security partnerships to one with a focus on grassroots developments. What does that mean? Medical experiments on the populace? That's what it sounds like. <laughs> wow. Anyway. Anyway. <laughs> well, it's just funny. She, 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 they have Kamala Harris doing a charm offensive in Africa. Why doesn't she try to do that here? Yeah. Huh? <laughs> why, why don't we move our foreign policy? <laughs> well, instead of focusing on national security, we start to focus on grassroots development. <laughs> There is a certain amount of skepticism from African governments and citizens. Many are aware that the outbreak of the Russia-Ukraine war is behind the renewed interest. The official stance from these countries is that they are not aligned with either Russia or the West in this war. Wow. Really? So when they say there's a certain amount of skepticism from African governments <laughs> and citizens... <laughs> I think they mean utter disbelief. I think that's what they mean. <laughs> Others, such as South Africa, have appeared on friendlier terms with Russia, controversially hosting joint naval exercises that coincided with the one-year anniversary of Russia's invasion of Ukraine. Wow, there's a thumb in your eye. Historical issues beyond the war complicate matters, though. <laughs> Kurt, did you know that? <laughs> it's complicated, you guys. It's complicated. While the Soviet Union had supported independent movements and the anti-apartheid struggle, the U.S. government designated today's ruling African National Congress a terrorist organization <laughs> during the Cold War. It's complicated. <laughs> so Russia was all on the side of independence in Africa as the United States was calling their African National Congress a terrorist organization. It's not that we uh, loved apartheid. It's just that we hated communism so much that we didn't care if they had to have apartheid. They had to have it. That's so that's right. not the same as being evil, right? <laughs> so there, but what this, sure, we did that. Sure, the U.S. government said that they were all terrorists right. during the Cold War. But I think they're forgetting America opposed apartheid in the most important way of all, Kurt, yeah. by making Lethal Weapon 2. Don't you remember that? Uh, that's what I could credit with ending it. I agree. Lethal with Danny Glover and Mel Gibson ended that, did that, it. that practice. <laughs> Wait, I just realized that during the Cold War, so they called, uh, uh, Mandela was called a terrorist in the Cold War. Yeah. And Bin Laden was called a freedom fighter a in freedom our own fighter. papers. That's right. Great. Complicated. It's complicated. Last month, African nations still accounted for nearly half of all absent abstentions on the UN General Assembly resolution that condemned Russia. U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken suggested this history was making it difficult to change African countries' decades <laughs> long relationship with Moscow. You, you know, suggested maybe that could be? 
You know, when Africans bring up uh, America supporting apartheid, I just think that's what about ism. Yeah. What, we can talk about that. Not now. Yeah. Right now we have to talk about Russia. Listen to this, Kurt. Unfortunately, more than unfortunately, the United States was too sympathetic to the apartheid <laughs> regime. So that history also doesn't get erased, you know, overnight. It's a process. That's what Anthony Blinken said. We're, we're trying to seize control of the internet to work on that. <laughs> Kurt, how many, how many more Lethal Weapons movies is it going to take to fix this problem? They're making, there's going to take three more. I like how it says, unfortunately, more than unfortunately, the United States was much too sympathetic to the apartheid regime. I wonder if there are any groups in the world that the United States is currently being too sympathetic to. <laughs> Can't think I, of one. I, I, I have not seen any of them <laughs> lately. Oh, wait, maybe the Nazis in Ukraine. So that guy we showed you before, Fred Mbembe, the leader of Zambia's Socialist Party, he said that his country is playing a key role in the United States anti-China crusade. It's not democracy and human rights they are pursuing in Africa. They are pursuing their geopolitical interests. They are pursuing their own economic interests. It's not for us. It's for them, Mbembe said. Yeah, no kidding. <laughs> If you bring it up to somebody who thinks America should intervene everywhere, they'll go, well, that's the reality. We got to do stuff. We got to do. do. Well, these are the people that you got to do stuff to to do that. And it, you think they're they're going to fall for it? Kurt, what's good for the United States is good for democracy. You know. That. Oh, that's true. If it is democracy if itself. It is. Yeah. Historically, the United States and Europe led their engagements through the prism of Africa as a problem to fix. Whereas China focused on trade, becoming the region's largest partner. So when so when the United States looked at Africa as a problem to fix, what that means is that historically we murder their leaders whenever we want. <laughs> yeah, like that's what that. That means. was the problem we fixed. That's the problems. We got another problem. We got to fix. Uh, and so I don't have to show you this, but this was the when Anthony Blinken went there last. I think it was August. When is this from? Yeah, August. So when Anthony Blinken went, there, they said the same thing. Uh, that she was the that's the Naledi Pandor. She's the Minister of International Relations and Cooperation of South Africa, and she said the same stuff. I don't need to show it to you. Um, so not going well for Kamala Harris. She's got a tough job. I got to say, she's got a tough job turning the people of Africa around after we, you know, killed their leaders and uh, done all the stuff to them. But uh, anyway, we'll see how it goes. Good good luck, Kamala. Laugh. Hope you laugh it up. <laughs> Go to jimmydore.com to see my new stand-up special, COVID Lies Are Funny. For only $10, you get to become a premium member, too. And come see us do our live shows. We're going to be doing stand-up comedy in Milwaukee, Nashville, Honolulu, Los Angeles, Northampton, Massachusetts, Syracuse, New York, Coho's, New York, Hartford, Connecticut, Baltimore, Maryland, and more. Go to jimmydore.com for a link for all those tickets. Mm -hmm.